Hi, welcome to Gear Garage. My name is Zach Collier and this is my internet show about basically whitewater boating or whatever I want to talk about. And today I want to talk about the Creature Craft. Uh, I was really lucky to be able to paddle one last week on the North Fork of the Smith and Oregon Hole Gorge in California. And I uh, just want to share some thoughts about it. I had a really good time and some of the pros and cons of the boat. First of all, a Creature Craft is basically kind of like in between a raft and a cataract. It kind of has features of both. But what really defines it is the, the thing over the top that allows it to roll on its side or go into a hole and get beat up and fall on its side without flipping and reflip it back over and keep going. And what really sets it apart from other inflatables is that it doesn't have the flip hazard that other boats have. And so the other thing it has is a seat belt. So you're basically tied into the boat, which in rafting we generally don't like. You know, we, you don't want to tie yourself in the boat. And what, a big reason is if you're tied in and the boat flips or wraps, you're you're tied in underwater and you maybe not won't be able to get free, more or less. Where with the Creature Craft, uh, so it has this Velcro thing where you Velcro it down here, you put a Velcro over the top, and you're tied into it. And I think for the Creature Craft, I'm, I'm okay with it. Because you don't have that hazard of being underwater. The roll cage above you and kind of around you keeps you from being underwater when you flip. Uh, also, if you were to wrap, I feel like you'd be somewhat protected by the whole boat. So I feel pretty good about it, and it's pretty easy to release. You just grab the Velcro and pull it off. I mean, it's remarkably easy. You know, when you're in a kayak, you're also kind of tied in too with your skirt, and, and you have to pull the, the skirt to get out and swim. Well, if you need to swim out of a creature craft, it really isn't that hard to pull that. So I think. Actually, I'm okay with being strapped in there. So the big defining thing would be, you know, the, the roll cage above it and then being tied in the boat, which is very different than most, most things. And uh, I think it's really useful boat for big volume continuous rivers. I think the real key to this is, you know, places you don't want to swim. I think that's when they're really useful. Uh, you know, I, I feel like they're, they're a little sluggish. Um, they're a little heavier. Um, they're not designed as well for performance, and so they also don't power through holes. That whole thing in the front hits water on a hole or a wave or a lateral and slows it down. So I feel like you have less punching power and you're a little bit more sluggish. So in, in a lot of ways, it takes more skill to run these. If you do want to run these well, you know, you have, you have to, your angle, your momentum, and uh, basically where you're at on the river has to be just perfect to make these lines. And if it's not, you're going to end up in a bad spot, which on these big volume rivers is typically a hole. And so you're, you're making it a little bit more difficult to run the rapid or requiring more skill. But the upside is if you do mess up, you're going to get beat up a little bit, but you're surrounded by this cage, which is was surprisingly, I felt surprisingly safe inside of it, especially when I was getting beat up. And uh, you'll, you'll, you won't swim. Um, you, you most likely won't swim. You still could swim. So I would say the other day we were in Oregon Hole Gorge. And uh, I was going down in the Creature Craft, and I saw a lateral on the side of the hole, and I felt pretty confident I could power through it based on my personal experience in other types of boats. You know, I felt like if I was in a kayak or a cataract, I could have powered through the lateral, and the Creature Craft didn't because it has a different punching power, and it just typewritered me into the hole and beat me up a little bit. And it popped me out. Um, it was actually kind of fun, like weirdly fun, surprisingly fun. And I was able to flip it back up and finish the rest of the canyon. And really, swimming there would have been terrible. So, you know, if I was kayaking or in a cataract or a raft, I think I would have made it through that lateral. Uh, but I also would not have done that run, any, any of those, because I'd say in any of those boats, there's a 10% chance I would probably have flipped and swam there. And I just do not want to swim there. Uh, whereas in the Creature Craft, you know, I felt pretty confident I, would go, I wouldn't swim. I felt like the, the lines were open. And uh, in that boat, I could reflip it if I needed to, and I would just take a little beat down. That's exactly what happened. And so I, I trade again. I'm trading off in the Creature Craft, um, you know, the maneuverability and the ability to make certain moves. And what I'm getting is the ability to flip back over and accidentally go into holes. So I get a little bit of of a backup plan in case things go wrong. And I think in, on certain rivers, especially big volume, continuous rivers where you don't want to swim. These boats are the best. I mean, there's just nothing's better um, if you don't want to swim. But the key is it has to be a big volume. I think in lower volume rivers or some rivers where there's sieves or the potential for trees, I think it's a little different case. But in these big volume open rivers, I just really think it's an awesome boat. 
So, and that's exactly what it's for, is, is when you, you just don't want to swim. Um, I think some of the downsides to these boats, uh, are, you know, don't have to do with how they act on the river. I think it's uh, the logistics of them. I mean, they're big boats, right? And they cost between six and $10,000. So first of all, you know, you have to be able to afford one of these boats. A lot of us that kayak, or raft, you know, the cost of entry is much lower. This is a, a, a big cost of entry. And you sort of need a truck and a trailer. You know, you're not gonna be, a, you're not gonna own a Subaru and, and go creature crafting. You really have to have a truck. And if you have friends and there's three or four or five of you, you need a truck and trailer or maybe more than one. Uh, but you also need a place to store them. So you, you probably need a garage or a warehouse or some land. You know, if you're living in an apartment in the city driving a Subaru, this, this sport isn't for you, you know. Um, the other thing is, is they're pretty difficult to portage. You know, when you're on a class five run with a raft, there's between two and six of you per raft. You know, that's a lot of manpower to do the portage and the raft isn't that big. But with creature crafts, if there's, you know, five of you and three creature crafts, or even five of you and five creature crafts, it's a lot of work to do a real portage. And so I think in general, creature crafts, you know, typically would avoid runs that portages just because it's just a lot of work to portage them down things. I would think, I've never done it, but man, it seems difficult. Or I would think if there's a chance of river wide wood, that would be another one. I, you know, some runs I'm pretty comfortable there's not gonna be wood, you know, in the canyon, but some I, it's a chance and I don't know how they would do getting them up and around or over, over river wide wood, where I'd feel more comfortable in a smaller boat in that situation. Uh, the other thing is, you know, just getting them, to, getting them on and off the river. You know, if you kind of do need a boat ramp at put in and take out, you know, so, um, you know, rivers like, uh, like the North Fork of the Smith where you can drive to put in and take out, you know, like the Food Lafu where you can, the Zambezi, you know, those are all good rivers to do this. You know, the Stikine has even been done in a creature craft and getting it to put in and take out isn't that bad. But if you're looking at doing Giant Gap in California, that's like a two mile hike in, you know, or, or Forks of the Kern or even the Tuolumne, that takeout's pretty brutal on the Tuolumne. It's, you may not go run these rivers just purely because getting the boats to and from the river are too difficult. So, so logistically, you know, these boats aren't for everybody. But those of you that like to run big water, continuous, these kind of rivers, I don't know, I, I think this is, uh, I, it's hard to say this because I've only done it one day, but I think it's my favorite boat on those runs. I just really enjoyed it. So. Um, I'd highly, I'd highly suggest checking them out. I know it's a big, and I know it's hard to just because not many people have them and you're not near those rivers, but, uh, I'd highly recommend them. And, you know, I think this is a boat, like I said, if you live down on the Food of Lafu or just in, in, in Patagonia where there's a lot of high volume rivers, you know, if you lived in Nepal, this would be a great boat for Nepal. Uh, you know, I feel like Southern Oregon, Northern California is kind of a Mecca for these kind of runs with the, the heavy rainfall they get there. And the rivers get really high. Rivers like you know Burnt Ranch Gorge on the Trinity, the whole Smith drainage, the Illinois, even the Rogue. There's a lot of rivers up there that get really high and and are really appropriate for these. I think that's a mecca. I think Alaska and a lot of parts of Canada have these kind of rivers. So if you live in these kind of areas, this is a great boat. I, I live in Hood River. We have a lot of smaller volume rivers. They do get high, but not to where I feel like you need a creature craft to run them. You know, I feel still feel comfortable in a kayak, it's nothing crazy, or, or a raft if I need to, or, you know, I, I can't justify owning a boat that's expensive that I might use once or twice a year, you know, but if I lived in these other areas, boy, I think that would, it would be a pretty cool boat, or if I had the, you know, the really the itch to travel a lot, and, you know, the money to transport these boats, um, I could see getting into it, so, yeah, I mean, I, I have to say, you know, with the right river, this is a really fun boat, you know, it takes some of the risk out of doing some of these rivers, which really appeals to me. And, and I, I, I give them two thumbs up. I just really had a good time. You know, just understand there are some weaknesses, and, and, but given those weaknesses, they are just really fun. So um, they're little, these boats are a little controversial. I think a lot of people have um, some misinformed opinions about them. And so if you want to have any discussions, I'd love to have a discussion down below in the, in the comment section or just ask me a question or you know, I can push it in the right direction. Uh, like I said, it's just a really fun boat and I'd love to talk about it more and get a discussion going. So thanks for joining me this week and I'll see you next time. Thanks.